left off for the break talking about flipping. Um, you said that you wanted to introduce a little story here, so I'm going to let you go ahead and do that. All right. So um, Thomas actually referred a, a, a buyer here, or I guess a seller. And, you know, there's so many things that just happen when you go through houses. And some of these houses, as I'm sure you've been in, that are just terrible. And this exactly. One, th this was actually not bad. So uh, the particular seller wanted to sell the house for more than uh, we could pay and like, on a cash basis. So again, like we mentioned right before the break is, is part of being in sales isn't to sell and try to convince this guy to sell for something that, you know, he doesn't want to sell, right? That's not really being an investor. What we're trying to do is just figure out how we can inject ourselves in that transaction that, that looks like it's going to transact. And so in this particular hit case, you know, his house needs work. Um, he doesn't have the money to fix it, right? So we're going to put up the money for him to fix it, possibly. And the discussion was really surrounding what was going to be the best scenario for him rather than trying to gear him towards just selling, right? And so the options that were presented to him were, you know, you could sell it as is, right? You're going to get much less. You can um, fix it up. We could do minor repairs, and you're going to get a little bit more. We can totally fix that up, and you're going to get the most, right? Right. But, but at what cost? And so what's the return for that investment, and is it worth it for him to do? And then the other options were, you know, he's really tried. One of the reasons he wanted to sell it was so that he could buy another property, you know, but he's concerned about cash flow. So he wanted to take all of this equity so he could keep the payment the same and move to a different area. And he might be able to accomplish that by, either you know adding an ADU or converting the garage to an ADU, okay. fixing up the house on a minor basis and increasing the income. So his income can go from like 2,500 because it's low under market rents right now to if he fixed up the house, he'd probably get 32, 3,400 for the house the way it, it, it sits right. after being remodeled. Um, and, and the remodel is a different remodel than obviously if you were flipping it. Correct. Um, but if you added an ADU, we figured out he might get an extra 2,400 for that ADU. And so, you know, all of a sudden you're getting fifty eight hundred dollars off this property, which would, you know, after paying all of the expenses, would probably cover a six hundred six hundred fifty thousand dollar mortgage. The cost of everything, you know, might only cost him, you know, two hundred thousand or something like that. And and so he goes two eighty, so he's into it for four eighty. Can cash out some money, possibly still buy another house, have a positive cash flow here and accomplish everything he wants to do. But now he's got two properties and tenants paying down this debt. So he gets ready to retire, he'll have more equity. Okay. You know, and so, you know, again, going back to it, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, most likely what's gonna happen is he's gonna, he's gonna probably sell the house because I think he's concerned about the, the, um, the payment on the other side. And he'd rather just have more cash and more equity. Uh, but presenting all these options to him, you know, kind of shows that like for us, you know, we don't need to transact every single house. Correct. Right? That's not what we're trying to do. Really what we're trying to do is establish relationships and figure out the best thing that is would make the best sense for this particular person. And ultimately, it's their decision with what they want to do. Our job is to present options. Exactly. And I think that once people see that, you know, you're, you're not pushy and you, you have their best interest in mind, even if that transaction doesn't transact that they're going to give you referrals. You know, I, I mean, I get phone calls from people that are like, Hey, I don't remember who mentioned you, but so and so somebody <laughs> mentioned you and I'd, I'd always written it down in case something came up and something's come up. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So let's switch gears real quick. You've been in the loaning business. How did you get into that? So, you know, shortly after, so I started wholesaling and then flipping. And then after flipping, um, you know, back in 91, you had the SNL crisis. Right. And so during that recession, there was an opportunity that was created shortly after that because we had a lot of base closures here. Aerospace left, you know, in large part, left California, and there was a net negative migration to California. So it means that more people were moving out of the state that were moving into the state. Okay. And because it, w it happened so rapidly, uh, the vacancy rate went up to like 13 15%. And, you know, if you're, if you want to know what that means, that means the percentage of apartment units that are available that were vacant that couldn't get rented out. And so, um, because of that lenders stopped lending on commercial properties because the vacancy rate was too high. Right. And so that created an, an opportunity for cash investors to buy these apartment buildings for, 
really less than it would cost to build them. And so, you know, give you an idea, one of the buildings that just comes to mind, you know, there was a property on Chestnut in Long Beach uh, we purchased. It was a 16-unit, 1972 built, three-story, all two-bedroom units uh, with an elevator. Wow. That we purchased for $225,000. This is a 14 or 16,000 square foot building, right? So you couldn't build it for less than probably five or 600,000 even back then. Right. And, you know, and, and so we had an opportunity to buy this that was, it was like, 80% vacant and you know and it was very difficult to get tenants and so what we did is is we said okay well let's put together the money you know we had some investors that were helping us flip prop that putting up money for us to flip properties we presented this and we basically syndicated the apartment building although I didn't know it was syndication back then we probably didn't do, even do it right because <laughs> we knew everyone but shortly after we started you know doing it more properly and uh, what we did is we ended up just kind of working with them where we managed the building. You know, we took an equity position as well and fixed it up and then started renting it out. Now we thought, hey, we're going to fix up these units and they're immediately going to rent out. They didn't immediately re rent out. So I read a book that was called Guerrilla Marketing. And it didn't really talk anything about, you know, like here's how you rent out units. Right. But really it just kind of got your creative juices flowing on things that you could do and things that you can try. And one of the things that we came up with was, let's hire some people to go door to door and drop off flyers and tell them we've got these units that are fully remodeled, right? Rather right. than there just be a sign or ads in the penny saver and newspaper and what have not. And so um, they started doing this. We started getting a little bit more phone calls. And then I don't know what happened. Something clicked. Oh, no, we rented some, ha some of them out. And then within like a month, they'd stop paying and we'd have to go through an eviction. And we're like, and, and, and so out of frustration, we're like, well, how can we eliminate this from happening? Because back then people, like owners were so desperate for tenants that what would happen was that you'd say first month free, last month free. And so people knew that they could move in, no deposit, right? right? Get the first month free. And everyone wanted just to have bodies in there because if you didn't have bodies, what was happening is people were breaking in and stealing stuff. And so you wanted to have bodies in your building so that that wouldn't happen. So um, we figured out it's okay. So these people, and we called them, uh, uh, what did we call them back then? We called them uh, uh, like bouncers or something like that. We call them, I forgot what the, what the exact term we were using. But basically these people would, would, if you went to their existing unit, when we were handing them a flyer, they had like a lawn chair, a cooler, and a TV. <laughs> right? They didn't really live there, right? They were just bouncing from place to place. Right. And jumpers, that's what we're calling them, jumpers. And so um, and so anyhow, so we, we, we said, okay, let's, let's change our strategy on the flyers. And it was during Christmas time. And so we gave the flyer guys, we're like, look, you're going to have a red flyer and a green flyer. And the green flyer, you're going to give the people that clearly have lived there. And you're going to start asking the question, how long have you been here? And so if they say they've been there for like two or three or four or five years, give them the green flyer. If they say, oh, they just moved there, and they take the flyer, give them the red flyer, right? Because those are the jumpers. We don't want right, them. Right, exactly. And so that really started, like, helping us keep these buildings occupied. And so what we started doing is, is you know, if they had a green flyer, they'd call up, and we're like, oh, what color was your, what was your flyer? Oh, it's green. Great. And so we're asking just because the guy gets commission, right? And so they would tell us, and, you know, we'd say, oh, great. You know, he spoke really highly of you. You guys are already qualified, you know, we're willing, you know, we, we'll rent you a truck, you know, we'll give you, you know, X amount of dollars for it. Because we knew that tenant, especially when they had been there and they said, oh, we've been here for seven years. My landlord doesn't take care of our unit. Ours has new appliances, new <laughs> carpet, new, all this. And we're like, look, we'd love to have you. And, you know, and they're long-term tenants. We knew they were going to stay long-term with us. So when we went to go, you know, initially we were just planning on keeping these buildings. And in hindsight, we should have kept all these buildings. But... You know, at the point where, you know, you're, you're now I'm in my early 20s and at the time I'm living in, on the beach in Newport, you know, <laughs> going to Long Beach when there was a tenant issue was just not fun. And right. we were only making, even for the 16 unit building, we were making, I mean, it was all positive cash flow. We had the building free and clear. The investors were getting their percentage of whatever the income was, and that was their return on investment. We were making our management fee plus the, the balance of whatever the, the, the equity was. And, you know, when we looked at this, we thought, all right, we could make $3,000 basically in perpetuity or, you know, we have the opportunity here. We can make, you know, like $300,000 just flipping this. And we're like, well, that's a lot of months worth of income, right? 
And so one thing you don't realize when you're that young, and this is advice I wish someone would have told me, was that time goes much quicker. Like, you don't have the time you think you have. Right. You know, it goes so quick. And for those of you who have kids, understand this better. You know, if you're younger and you're just starting out, you, you don't quite get it. But believe me, time flies by so quick. We should have kept the $3,000 because that was increasing every year, right? And, you know, but we took the 300 because we're, you know, selfish, stupid kids, right? And so, <laughs> so we made great money when we thought, wow, we can start flipping these apartment buildings. And what we did is we got the commercial brokers in the area to buy in to our technique as to why our buildings were worth a, a, um, a lower cap rate because we had longer term tenants, whereas the other buildings had high vacancies and also had, um, you know, shorter term tenants. And they're like, well, you know, the initial thing was, well, your tenants have just moved in. And we're like, yeah, but all of our tenants have been at these other places for a minimum of three years. And, you know, you can't say that about your other remodel buildings. Exactly. And so they agreed and they would sell that to their buyers because their buyers who were looking for this didn't want headaches. So our buildings basically had less headaches from a tenant perspective than other buildings that were for sale. Oh, good strategy. Once again, good strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our last final commercial break here. Uh, we're going to be back with our guest, Robert Fagoso. Thank you for listening to The Real Men of Real Estate. Yeah.